letter that Roberta Laundry wrote to Brian Laundry, the one that says burn after reading, has just been released. It is the center of a lot of conflict for the Petito family. It says, I just want you to remember I will always love you and I know you will always love me. You are my boy. Nothing can make me stop loving you. Nothing will or could ever divide us. No matter what we do or where we go or what we say, we will always love each other. If you're in jail, I will bake a cake with a file in it. If you need to dispose of a body, I will show up with a shovel and garbage bags. If you fly to the moon, I will be watching the skies for your reentry. If you say you hate my guts, I will get new guts. Remember that love is a verb, not a noun. It's not a thing. It's not words. It's actions. Watch people's actions to know that they love you, not their words. Therefore, I am certain that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor the ruling spirits, nor things present or things to come, nor powers from above, nor powers from below, nothing in the entire created world can separate our love. Neither hostile powers, nor messages of heaven, nor monarchs of earth, nothing the power to separate us. Romans 8.38, Extended Version. Nothing can separate us, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not threats, not even sin. Not the thinkable or unthinkable can get between us, not time, miles and miles and miles. Now, I don't know about everybody else, but that seems like a really odd letter to write to your child. And of course, Roberta says she only wrote it to tell Brian how much she loved him, but that's just a strange way of doing it. I mean, I guess everybody does things differently, but it seemed weird to me. She also says that the letter was written before they found out about Gabby. Now let's listen to what the Petito's attorney had to say about the matter and what it could potentially mean for the case that the Petito family has filed moving forward. To talk more about Brian Laundrie's mom's chilling burn after reading letter is the attorney for the Petito family, Pat Riley. Pat, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for inviting me, Nick, and uh, thanks for your service. As, hey, thank you so much. Listen, Pat, uh, Chris, and Roberta Laundry have not been charged with any crime in connection with Gabby Petito's death, but that letter does reference burying a body, bringing a shovel, and 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 and, and burying a body, which are criminal acts. Uh, now, their attorney says the document is simply a love letter uh, to their son. What did you make of this when you saw it, and what did the family think when they when they learned about this letter? The first time I saw it was in the FBI office in Tampa last year when I had an opportunity to re re uh, review the letter, and frankly, I was shocked by the language in the letter. Uh, to, to, to take the position that the letter was written as a love letter to a son or a letter to a son to express how much you love him, uh, there was an odd choice of words there. Uh, and if, um, uh, if it was written before uh, the trip, and I have no reason to know, I, I, it's undated, so we don't know when it was written, it's up to the jury to decide, but if it was written before the trip, uh, it's very ironic. Is the letter enough evidence uh, that a crime happened? The, the purpose of the letter for the civil proceeding that the Petito family has brought against the Laundry family is that it shows that they were aware that Gabby was deceased at the time that attorney Bertolino on September 14 made a statement uh, that he hoped that the, the that Gabby Petito would be reunited with her family. Uh, that is a, an outrageous thing to say when they knew that she was deceased. Now, like you said, that letter is not dated. Now, both you and Laundrie's attorney have disputed when it was written, regardless of when Roberta wrote it. it could this letter bring about uh, criminal charges and, and just further deepen the whole mystery behind Gabby's death? Well, I don't know what criminal charges there could be because I don't think there was anyone acting to help bury the body. Uh, there's just an expression of a willingness to commit a crime. There's no indication that there was ever any, uh, that that willingness was ever acted upon. Okay, now if the note won't induce criminal culpability, uh, what, if any, bearing will it have on the Petito's civil case? Well, the, the basis of our case is that the Laundry family and attorney Bertolino knew at the time that they hoped, uh, they expressed their hope that Gabby would be reunited with her family. When you add it together with all of the evidence, they left together 
on July 2nd to head out west in Gabby's van. Uh, Gabby had contact with her family daily. Uh, her mother didn't talk to her after August 27th. Her father didn't talk to her after August 21st. The FBI suspects that she was murdered on August 27th. The day after, on August 28th, there were uh, a very many telephone conversations between uh, Christopher, Roberta, and Brian Laundrie. And the following day, there were several telephone conversations between Christopher and Roberta Laundrie and attorney Bertolino. And then Brian returns home on September 1 without Gabby. Well, the inference there is they had to have known that she was uh, deceased. This letter just adds another layer to that uh, and shows how callous their statement was on uh, September 14. Does this letter prove that the Laundries knew about Gabby being deceased prior to Brian coming back to their home? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Mm -hmm.